Good morning, committee members, members of the public viewing this meeting via YouTube, and those representatives of the Department of Land and Natural Resources, the Agribusiness Development Corporation, the Department of Agriculture, and the Office of the Auditor who are joining the committee members via Zoom or have been invited to participate in this meeting via Zoom. This is the September 29th, 2021 meeting of the House Investigative Committee to investigate the compliance with audit numbers 19-12 and 21-01 noticed for nine o'clock AM via video conference. My name is Della Albalotti and I serve as the chair of this committee. Present for this meeting in person is Vice Chair Linda Ichiyama. In addition, present by both Zoom and in person in this meeting, in this hearing room uh, is Representative Mark Hashem. Present via Zoom is Representative David Tarnas, Representative Dale Kobayashi, Representative Amy Peruso, and Re Representative Kyle Yamashita. Members, we have quorum to take action as a committee. Members, this meeting has a simple agenda, which we will take up shortly. But before we begin, I would like to make a brief statement as there have been questions raised in the public discourse about the purpose and intentions of this Chapter 21 House Investigative Committee. As I stated on September 13, 2021, with the beginning of witnesses testimony to the committee, the purpose of this committee, as stated in House Resolution 164, is to follow up on the audits of the DLNR Special Land and Development Fund, report number 19-12, and the Agribusiness Development Corporation report number 21-01, and to examine the recommendations in those audits for purposes of improving the operation of state agencies, their funds, and any other matters of importance that may be supported by the evidence submitted to this committee. In the completion of these audits, the Office of the Auditor is the investigative arm of the legislature. The auditor should be working in, in conjunction with the legislator, legislature and this committee and pursuant to the legislative directives set forth in the bills and resolutions we pass directing the auditor to conduct audits. In just the opening days of the taking of the testimony, this committee has already heard testimony that there may be something amiss in the scope of these audits and that there are significant significant subject areas, whether it is the large parcels of land on Kauai that are some of the most productive farmlands in Hawaii, or the numerous types of contracts that are the responsibility of the land division that were omitted from the scrutiny by the auditor. While there are critical findings and recommendations offered in the audits that are the subjects of this investigative committee, there are also grave concerns that the findings and recommendations have not gone far enough. It is our job, this committee's responsibility to follow up on those areas where we are identifying significant problems in policy mismanagement, malfeasance and fraud. It is our job to get to the root causes of some of the significant problems being raised in these audits. It is some of these problems that appear to have been omitted completely from the findings, recommendations, and final reports. We would not be doing our job as legislators if we turned a blind eye to the problems being raised in this committee. Now the work of the committee is in its preliminary stages as we continue, continue to go through thousands of documents that have been produced and thousands more that we are likely to get with further subpoenas. In addition, we still have numerous witnesses to contact, interview, and gather information from before they are asked and subpoenaed to testify before this committee. All of this has to be completed before we can draft findings and recommendations that will ultimately be voted upon by this committee and which none of us on this committee had predetermined. Any attempts to curtail and delay the investigative work of this committee will be viewed as obstruction, retaliation, and interference with this committee's work. Already, 
there is a written letter by the auditor that is indicating that he will not be cooperating fully with this committee. I find this very troubling because in his opening statement under oath, the auditor stated, quote, we have nothing to hide. We did our job, we did it well. We are, the yellow, we are a yellow book office, which means that our audits are conducted in accordance with government auditing standards promulgated by the Comptroller General of the United States. In short, following yellow book guidelines ensures that we are performing high quality audit work with competence, integrity, objectivity, and independence, close quote. The appropriate questions to ask by this committee in follow-up of the audits, and which should and can be disposed of quickly if the Office of the Auditor did in fact follow the Yellow Book standards, are questions about whether the work conducted by the Office of the State Auditor at the various stages of the audit process complied with the 2011 Yellow Book standards. Members, we are going to be asking these questions and doing our due diligence. That is what we have been tasked to do by House Resolution 164. So on that note, members, I'd like us to go into our agenda and first to take up the is issuance of Sabina Dukas um to numerous agencies, members. And I'm gonna start with the easiest one first by chronological order of what we are going to be asking the agencies to provide. So most of these requests are based upon requested documents that were identified through the audit investigative committee hearings over the past two weeks. We will be asking uh, members, and we'll take this up in order, um, Uh, first, for a subpoena for Chair Shimabukuro Geyser or appropriately designated representatives of the Department of Agriculture. For this um, document, members, the subpoena will be issued to be produced pursuant to our rules by Friday, October 1st, 2021, with an appropriate bait stamp. There is a very short timeline on this document because this was already actually produced to the committee at its hearing. The request for this subpoena ducus tecum will be for a two page, the, the two page sheet on the Department of Agriculture and College of Tropical Agriculture and Human Resources, um, including their missions, activities, responsibilities, and common tasks and co collaborations. This document was already presented, so I'm requesting pursuant to the subpoena ducus tecum that Chair Shimabuku Geyser or her appropriately designated representative provide this to the committee with the bait stamp. Any questions on this first subpoena ducus tecum? Vice Chair, can you take a vote? The committee is, uh, the chair's recommending issuing a subpoena as noted. For Vice Chair, vote aye. Representative Hasha? Aye. Representative Kobayashi? Aye. Rep. Peruso. Aye. Rep. Tarnas. Aye. Rep. Yamashita. Aye. Rep. Uh, Okimoto is excused. Chair, the recommendation is adopted. Okay. The next subpoena ducus tecum um, being voted upon will be to ask Chair Shimabukuro Geyser or, or her appropriately designated representative to produce documents pursuant to her rules by Wednesday, October 13th with the appropriate bait stamps as follows. These documents include any communications, including emails discussing the division of responsibilities between the Department of Agriculture and the Agribusiness Development Corporation and recommendations made. And the matrix of expectations for evaluating the executive director of the Agribusiness Development Corporation that Chair Shimabuko Geyser used as an ADC board members. Again, members, this, these two documents were requested at the hearings, but were not yet produced. So we are providing uh, Chair Shimabukuro Geyser and the Department of Agriculture um, the appropriate time needed to be able to gather and produce these documents by Wednesday, October 13th, 2021. Any questions or discussion members? Seeing none, Vice Chair Ichiyama. Chair's recommendation is to issue the subpoena as noted. 
Noting all members present with Representative Okimoto excused, are there any reservations? Any no's? Recommendation is adopted. Okay. The second set of subpoena members will be those documents um, from the Office of the Auditor as identified. Again, these were um, documents referenced to in our committee hearings with the auditor. Um, and they have been placed into a letter that was sent to all of you on September 27, 2021. Members, the, the issuance of the subpoena Ducasticum will identify Wednesday, October 13th, 2021 as the date for production of these documents. These include the manual of guides setting out the policies and procedures of the Office of the Auditor that were in use between June 2017 and March 2020 when the audits of the Department of Land and Natural Resources Special Land and Development Fund and the audit of the Agribusiness Development Corporation was concluded. Copies of the contracts, including any amendments with KKDLY LLC and Acuity LLP related to the audit of the DLNR Special Land and Development Fund report number 19-12 and the audit of the Agribusiness Development Corporation report number 21-01. The complete schedule of expenditures by cost category prepared by KKDLY LLC pursuant to its contracted work scope of work identified in report number 19-12, including the documentation of selected vendors that were paid more than $100,000 in aggregate and the review of invoices conducted by KKDLY LLC for proper approval for compliance with procurement procedures and propriety of dis disbursements. Next, the complete schedule of all accounts with transfers to and from the SLDF prepared by KKDLY LLC pursuant to its contracted scope of work identified in report number 19-12 and KKDLY LLC's determination as to whether the transfer served the stated purpose of this SLDF. And finally, the complete schedule of cash receipts, cash disbursements, transfers, and fund balances for the accounts that comprise the SLDF prepared by KKDLY LLC pursuant to its contracted scope of work identified in report number 19-12. Members, again, these are all documents that have been referenced in the report that we are following up on. Any questions or discussion members? Seeing none, Vice Chair for the vote. Chair's recommendation is to issue the subpoena as noted, noting the excuse absence of Representative Okimoto. Are there any reservations? Any no's? Seeing none, the recommendation is adopted. Thank you, members. Okay, the, the next set of subpoenas to be issued by this committee are going to be directed to Executive Doc Director James Nakatani or appropriately designated representative. The first set, again, similar to what was requested of um, Chair Shimo Bukuro, is to be produced pursuant to our rules by Friday, October 1st, 2021, with appropriate bait stamp since these documents have already been provided to the committee at its hearing. These documents include the documents related to past and current litigation, the timeline of Whitmore property enforcement, the notes from the Agribusiness Development Corporation Investigative Committee on Agricultural Policy. And members, those are all the documents that are gonna be requested to be turned over to the, this committee by Friday, October 1, 2021 with appropriate date stamp. Any questions or discussion? Seeing none, Vice Chair for the vote. Chair's recommendation is to issue the subpoena as noted, noting excuse absence of Ref Okimoto. Are there any reservations? Any no's? Seeing none, the recommendation is adopted. Thank you, Vice Chair. The next subpoena Ducas Tikam will be issued again to Executive Director James Nakatani or appropriately designated representative for the following documents to be uh, produced pursuant to our rules by Friday, October 15th, 2021 with the appropriate bait stamps as follows. Number one, any and all emails related to the provision of the auditor's draft report findings and recommendations in the audit of the ADC report number 21 dash zero one. A comment on this document members, there was a document of emails produced to us in the hearing, but the request is now for any and all emails related to the provision of the auditor's draft report findings and recommendations. And hence the extended uh, amount of time for the ADC to produce these documents. 
The second set of documents will be a list of the seven initial tenant files that were turned over to the auditor during the audit process. The third will be the records or documentation, including from other agencies that may be in the possession of ADC that led to ADC's decision not to hire a private property manager. Members, the next two um, sets of documents to be requested of ADC were not discussed in the hearings, but certainly are relevant to this committee. So I'm adding these to the list of requested documents. Any and all land purchase agreements entered into by ADC from 2020, 2010 to 2021 and any market analyses developed in conjunction with these purchases. And all agendas, minutes, and recordings of the ADC board meetings from 2010 to 2021. Members, a comment on this set of documents, the agendas, minutes, and recordings of the ADC board meetings from 2010 to 2021. We do have some of the, the, these minutes and agendas, but we, uh, um, the initial review of um, our research staff is that we have the minutes and agendas from 2020 and 2021. Um, there were indications that the audit report did review older agendas and minutes. So my assumption was that those agendas and minutes would have been provided to us pursuant to the very first subpoena Ducas Tecum we provided to ADC, but we are not able to locate those documents. So we are gonna formally specify that these are the documents that we want. And it is gonna be under the obligation of both this subpoena Ducas Tecum as well as the other subpoena Ducas Tecum that we are requesting these older agendas, minutes and recordings. Members, any questions or discussion? Seeing non vice chair for the vote. Chair's recommendation is to issue the subpoena as noted, noting excuse absence of Rep. Okimoto. Are there any reservations? Any no's? Seeing none, the recommendation is adopted. Okay, for our last, last subpoena, Ducas Tecum, this will be issued to Chair Suzanne Case or the appropriately designated representative from the Department of Land and Natural Resources. And these documents are going to be requested to be pursued to our rules by Friday, October 15th, 2021, with appropriate bait stamps as follows. All documentation on engagement conferences with the auditor, including emails between staff members of DLNR and staff members of the Office of the Auditor. Number two, submittals to the Board of Land and Natural Resources pertaining to infrastructure related to Sand Island Business Association master lease, including infrastructure dedication. Any memos including staff memos to land division management concerning the issue of leasing and the different approaches to leasing that were submitted for consideration to the Board of Land and Natural Resources, including any and all memos submitted by former administrator Keith Chun. A summary identifying the contracts, to, contracts that the auditor could have audited, including but not limited to the appraisal contracts and planning contracts for Kanoe Lehua and East Kapolei. The contract to develop the strategic master plan that the DLNR is currently working on and that was discussed in the hearings before this committee. Any statutory proposals, and these can be in very draft form, to assist the Department of Land and Natural Resources, including with leasing its properties that have been developed in response to the findings and recommendations of Audit 19-12. And finally, members, there are two additional sets of documents that were not raised uh, in, the in the hearings of this committee, but are noted in the audit report. This is 
the name of the consultant hired by DLNR and the contract executed with that consultant to quote, clean up the accounting records so the office of the auditor would be able to complete their work as identified on page 36 of audit report 19-12. And a copy of the completed April 2019 audit of DLNR's financial statements by NNK CPAs cited to on page 36 of audit report number 19-12. Members, any questions or discussions? Okay. Seeing none, vice chair for the vote. Chair's recommendation is to issue the subpoena as noted. Noting the excused absence of Representative Okimoto, are there any reservations? Any no's? Seeing none, the recommendation is adopted. Thank you, members. Um, on to the next item on our agenda, scheduling of appearances of witnesses before the committee. Uh, members, we are continuing to work with witnesses. And what I would request as a, a, a means of firming up your schedule um, we will be conducting full day hearings on Wednesday, October 13th, Thursday, October 14th, potentially Wednesday, October 20th, all day, Thursday, October 21st, all day. And then on Wednesday, October 27th, members, uh, I'm going to release the afternoon of that date. So if you could just hold the morning of Wednesday, October 27th, uh, until approximately um, 1130 if needed. And then on Thursday, October 28th, um, similarly, if you can, I'm gonna release you for the afternoon and if you can hold the nine to 12 o'clock hour for the 28th. Any questions on the scheduling members? Okay, um, the final thing on our agenda is we need to schedule a meeting, excuse me, for the issuance of subpoenas to witnesses and any other a potential follow-up for discovery of documents that we might identify. This meeting will be scheduled for Wednesday, October 6th at 9.30 a.m. So next week, members, Wednesday, October 6th at 9.30 a.m. And we will be issuing the notice uh, by the end of business day for that meeting of the committee. Any questions, members? All right, members, that brings us to the end and the conclusion of our agenda. Um, there being no other business or matters before this committee and seeing uh, any questions from members? No questions from members? All right, we are adjourned. Thank you and please be safe.